G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, in that last video I did on machining aluminium, I replaced the uh, the knob that was on here with an aluminium one, and this is the aluminium one. Previously it looked like this, and it wobbled around the place. Now it's, uh, yeah, it's good. Everything's nice and rigid and it's uh, one mil bigger diameter too, so it, a little bit more to grip for blokey sized hands, but everything else is dimensionally the same, you know. So. One to go. So it's just the tail stop, and that one's flopping around as you can see. It's uh, not very well done. They could have done that better. But apart from this, the whole thing's good. But uh, they were putting an aluminium one on there as well. Well, we've switched from the old CQ9325. You can see she's done plenty of work. And we've moved across to the the old Shawblum 102 from the 1930s. You can never have too many lathes. You know, well, I suppose you can have too many lathes, but a couple was really handy because I've still got the setup with the chuck. And the Shawblum set up for collars. So let's go and look at the Shawblum. <laughs> Okay, now we'll put the taper on the, uh, the other end. Oh, hang on, first I've got to open this out slightly with the boring bar. It's, uh, yeah, it's a bit too snug otherwise. I used a 12mm end mill. I haven't got a 13. <laughs> so I have to use a boring bar just to, just to take a little bit off that. Open it out slightly. These tiny little boring bars are so handy. And this little tool post does a good job too on this lathe. It's perfect. Yep, that'd be perfect. I think we'll just go in now. Okay, now for the taper. To set up the top side for your taper, easiest way is just to stick the handle in the in the in the collet chuck. And use a test indicator and just uh, work up and down on your taper. Take your reading. When there's no movement, you're there. Lock it up. Done. Easy as that. Now we just put our tool post back up and uh, put a cutter in it. Working on collets, it's vitally important that you keep everything clean. You don't want any rubbish getting into the chuck itself. Threads have all got to stay clean, internal and external. So you want an air compressor, give the uh, the, ca the cap and the chuck a good blowout, and the collets and seals, give them a good blowout. You want all those slots to be clean, and then it will just compress 
accurately and you'd be good to go. I won't ever use, well, I only use ER in the shop. I have used uh, other collets. Um, there's actually takes W20s, which are like C5. And the same rule applies right through. You have to keep everything clean. And then you'd be right. Okay, moving on. Right, we've got the, the little wider handle to length. So all we have to do now is do the taper and we'll just do this by comparing what we've got to what we want. And when it's the same, we're done. So let's get on with it. wet and dry, clean it up a bit. See if it comes up. Yeah, this is that bit of aluminium that had a different density at one end. I was going to just not use it, then I thought I'd bugger it. See if it comes up, it might work all right. I think, it, I think it's going to be okay, do the job. So you just use a bit of kerosene and engine oil, and you lose, and that'll that'll do a good job. That's all I ever use. An old timer's recipe from Noah's day. Yeah, that looks really good. If it's not good enough, I'll just redo it with some other aluminium. <laughs> I think that'd be all right. That looks pretty reasonable. Yep. Good enough. So yeah, the old $365 shawl is uh, worth its weight in gold. And as I said, second lathe set up for collets is definitely the way to go. Alright, so now it's just a matter of now break some of the edges on the linisher and I think she's good to go. This is a good example of why you want to use collets on your lathe because when you do this sort of work, if you try and do it with a conventional three-jaw chuck or even a four-jaw, you're going to mark the, the end result for sure. Whereas with collets, that can't happen. And interestingly, this particular collet chuck, which I've got on the Shawblin, will actually fit on the mini lathe. It's actually the correct uh, sized recess and uh, mounting bolt position to go on the mini lathe. They're made for the mini lathe. So yeah, you can actually use collets on a mini lathe, no problem whatsoever. And uh, I know that uh, quite a few people do, so go that way. Right, we're ready to go. Here's the original and here's the new boy. And lengthwise it's the same. One mil thicker di uh, diameter. I'll fill it on. Well, there it is, job done. Pretty neat, eh? <laughs> oh, that's great. That turned out really well. That's a lot better than the other one, and uh, more to grip. It's that extra one millimetre makes a, quite a difference. More than you'd think. And, uh, yeah, good. And this one down here as well. I reckon that's a good mod. It's uh, there's no 
no actual slop at all now and it, it's nice and snug. So this shows you what you can do with a bit of home cast aluminium and yeah, if you're going to do this, as I said, collets are definitely a, a big advantage to do this sort of work and you can uh, avoid marking stuff, particularly when you're working on soft metals like this. Okay, well that's it for me, I hope you enjoyed it, we'll see you next time, cheers.